D-Max from Simplon, electronic gearing and suspension from XX1 Eagle Axis and Fox Live Valve, a monster 1125 watt hours of battery and at a few quid short of 13,000 pounds or 13,000 euros, one of the most expensive ENTBs in the world. Oh yes, this one has all the goodies, but does more expensive necessarily mean it's more advanced? And does digging deeper into your pockets actually equate to a higher performance? Does spending more cash mean that a bike is faster and better? Do you actually get more boost for your buck? So in trying to attempt to answer this question, Bosch have sent us this bike. And I have to be honest, it's possibly one of the toughest questions that we've ever tackled on EMBM. Now, any link between money and performance is a very, very tricky subject. I mean, take the Don's recent feature on his Audi RS6, in which he asked the question, is this the ultimate MTB car? Essentially, it has four wheels, four dampers, five doors, and a motor in the same way as, say, a Fiat Panda does. The bottom line, however, is both are limited to 70 mile an hour on British roads, and both move through heavy traffic at the same speed. But enough about boring cars. I mean, let's face it, most of the time, you're sat there dreaming like a lemon anyway. No, the Rapcon P-Max, way more fun. Now this time, we've got two wheels, two dampers, a chassis, a motor, and a battery. Yes, you will find some of those parts on many of the bikes, and often on bikes a fraction of the cost. But that doesn't matter. Because the question we are attempting to answer here is, is this the most advanced EMTB? Now, I really think that question needs adjusting a touch. And I didn't like to mention it earlier, but surely the most advanced MTB car has got to be a van. In a similar way, the most advanced downhill EMTB probably wouldn't be a cross-country one. So I'd just like to change it to, is this the ultimate trail style EMTB? Because let's face it, a downhill bike and a cross country bike would have different needs. So what do we have? Hmm, a spoke magnet. Now those can get moved out of line and lead to error codes. I think you will find that those days are long gone. And on most Bosch driven e-mounted bikes these days, you will get chainstay mounted sensors and hub magnets, which prevent misalignment. So you see, we're actually asking quite a lot of questions here. And if this is to be one of the world's most advanced EMTBs, we are also looking at some of the simple things done right too, as well as the new technology, the motor and battery placement, the componentry and the cabling. Or oh, no cabling at all. Electronic shifting, SRAM XX Eagle Axis. Surely this is advanced technology. You know what? I love that it's cleaner and in many ways simpler, but I fully believe that the future of EMTB gearing will be automatic and not finger operated. Or at least let's have an icon which tells us when to move up or down gear. But guys, do the mini seconds matter? Let us know, and maybe is sprocket and chain wear a bigger issue?
Let's turn our attention back to the package then, folks. What else do we have on one of the world's most expensive EMTVs? So expensive that for the same money, you could buy a first-class ticket from San Fran to Hong Kong, a small family car, or a Tiffany's one karat gold engagement ring. But believe me, the joy you would get out of this, or indeed any other EMTB, is far, far greater than a gold ring or business class travel. How, though, did we actually get the Simplon Rapcon to be a fact on the ground? So it's time now to turn our attention to the configurator or customization. The great thing about this bike is you can build it to whatever spec you want. This is just so much fun. But obviously, I want this bike to be state of the art, the most advanced e-mountain bike in the world. So I'm gonna change things, which you can do, such as the brakes, the saddle, the handlebars, the stem, the wheel set, the spacer, the fork, the seat post, the crank set, the lights, the rear shock, Obviously, we're gonna stick some uh, Fox Live valve on there. An additional battery. Why have 630 watt hours when you can have 1,125 watt hours? We can change the display from Perion to Kiox, which actually goes with the Fox Live valve. And you can change some accessories such as a water bottle. Anyhow, the bike with the extra battery and the, F and the Live valve and of course, the SRAM Axis Eagle shifting now goes to 27 kilos and comes in at around about 13,000 euros. So the configurator, I really, really believe this to be advanced. Well, it's certainly advanced buying, that's for sure. But guys, let's know your thoughts. Is this advanced? It's gotta be, right? Okay, okay, so the buying might not be as important as performance, how it actually operates on the hill, or in a whole world of pain that is an alpine ascent, or maybe a dirty, nasty Welsh gully. What makes an advanced car like Neil's Audi is the motor, but also the suspension, which allows that power to be delivered to the tarmac. And this holds true for an EMTB2, I believe. Now the Rapcon has been designed with Fox Electronic Live Valve. Now this is electronically controlled suspension which is operated via the Bosch system. Fox say that via elaborate sensor technology in the front and in the rear, the particularities of the terrain are detected a thousand times per second and that the fork and shocks are adjusted within seconds. The Fox Live Valve is only actually available on a select few bikes as stock at the moment. As you can see, we have got sensors up on the fork here and also down on the rear. Now what they do is they detect movement upwards and downwards as the bike moves through the terrain. The way, you, uh, the way you access Live Valve is via your controller on your handlebar. So it's that little button, you just simply hit that and you can then adjust your settings. So you've got here, you've got commute, you can go into firm, sport, comfort, or open. You've also got the app. Now this is super cool. So if you look at the app here, and they've gone open and you switch to comfort, and it changes sport, firm and commute. But also what you've got as well is you hit that, you've got your the option to control the bump sensitivity um, on the suspension. So that that is basically the breakaway force that it takes to operate the suspension. Wow, so much to think about, so many configurations. Uh, but let's get one thing very clear. If it is downhill speed, which you are after, then more travel, more advanced damping, and better tires are going to allow you to do that. So to answer the question, is it advanced technology? Well, yes, of course it is. But a key part of riding is anticipation. And I don't think that a shock absorber and a fork can actually see what's coming on the ground. Time then, I think, to move to the boiler room. Yeah, you like what I did there? Yes, so seeing as the suspension would be pretty much useless without the motor, it is time to turn our attention to that fourth generation Bosch Performance CX motor, which I truly believe to be the most important part of this bike. Yes, the tires, the wheels, the suspension, the brakes are important too, but no motor, no battery, no fun. Bosch 
motor is one of the lightest and most compact motors on the market. With 85 Nm, it is also one of the most powerful we have ridden and continually outclimbs most others. And whilst we know the climbing speed is also dependent on such things as tyres and geometry, what really stands the Bosch motor apart is the software, the fine tuning of this motor that makes it so natural to ride. But what do we actually mean by natural? Now this is a topic that comes up quite often. What we don't mean is that it's going to operate like an MTB because that is certainly not the case. What we're focusing on here is things such as the startup. Now if it starts up too quickly or abruptly that means it's going to be a real handful on hill climb starts and also it doesn't shut off too abruptly when you're climbing as well because that would mean the technical climbing would be extremely difficult due to the shut off on the motor. This Bosch motor is frighteningly consistent. Now this is especially important on climbing where you need a super smooth and reliable power delivery system. However, should you need that little extra kick to get you up and over a step, then stamp on the pedals harder and you get an extended boost, a feature unique to Bosch. This also means that you can often get away with being in the wrong gear. Not that we'd encourage that, of course. Bosch also has a wide range of displays and batteries and of course the EMTB mode, an automatic mode whereby the motor will identify just how much support you need, allowing you to focus on the climb. But you know what, I think it's that reassuring Metallica. The Bosch motor, well it has that kind of well-engineered tough beat about it. It's strong, it's engaging. Is it state of the art? Is it advanced? Yes, for sure. Simplon runs a dual battery system, which means you've got 625 watt hours in the down tube, plus the extra 500 watt hours, which means a monster amount of range, which is actually great for every eventuality, such as in the hills as we are today in the pouring rain. Um, but what I will say is that actually 625 is a huge capacity, and for someone who weighs 80, 90 kilos, you can probably get a three, four hour ride in, you know, in, in, um, in the mid power mode. So it's, as it is, it's great. So what you got to bear in mind is, do you actually need that extra weight if you're going to be doing more technical riding? Because the bike goes from 23 kilos to 27 kilos. So um, there, is, there is a trade-off between uh, lightweight performance and range when it comes to battery capacity. On the question of advanced battery technology, clearly that is one for the boffins. But there's no doubt that very soon we will have lighter batteries with the same range. It's true Bosch don't have an advanced app like some brands quite yet, but on motor software and reliability, Bosch have really sharpened the detail into EMTB riding dynamics and durability. Remember, it all comes back to that definition which we spoke about earlier. And it must be frustrating for you guys. We see all these reviews, best e-bike 2021, when actually what we need to be seeing is best type of e-bike, or even better, best type of e-mountain bike. But guys, let us know your thoughts. What matters to you when it comes down to performance? What we do know that when it comes down to geometry, there are some well accepted numbers such as the chain steel length, the bottom bracket, the head angle, the down tube length and the wheelbase. These are great all mountain e mountain bike numbers. Returning then to what type of bike it is. Now remember, in order to answer the question, is this the most advanced EMTB? First of all, we need to define the type. Well, it can be a couple of types. It can actually be 150 mil travel front and rear with 29 inch wheels, or it can metamorphose into a 160, 170 mil travel bike with a 27.5 inch wheel rear and a 29 front simply by the flip of a chip. So advanced, yes, I think so when it comes down to geometry and suspension. And I'm really surprised that more brands aren't tuned in to that geometry adjust feature because let's face it, this bike can be a trail bike, it can be a gravity bike, and by way of the Fox Live valve, it can actually be a commuter bike as well. I mean, why wouldn't you? 
The Simplon has some great features and some components such as the motor, the electronic shifting and live valve suspension are certainly advanced. In many ways, a lot of people will absolutely love the idea of live valve as it simply takes the guesswork out of suspension. And with the upgrade to Kiox, you get more connectivity features to boot. But this Bosch motor is now finely tuned for the task of tackling some of the nastiest climbs and in many ways is the most advanced part of the bike. Of EMTB innovations, Bosch continue to push the sport forwards and beautifully upwards. But I'm left thinking, can you actually have an advanced do-it-all bike? And I'm also wondering that the 7,000 euro model will probably climb and descend equally as fast. But what do you think?